So it's bye-bye to these crusty old cartoon zombies in Dying Light 2, and hello to the new and massively improved versions. That's right, Techland have actually reskinned all of their zombies to look way more realistic than they did before, and the results are pretty stunning. And that's not all, as they've also addressed the insane amount of copy and pasted assets around the map too, so stick around and I'll go through everything I've found so far, but first let's take a closer look at these new biters. So one of my biggest issues with Dying Light 2 was the art style of the zombies. I did a whole video on the subject last year explaining why to me they just looked like weird goofy cartoons and I just couldn't understand why Techland chose to take such a massive departure from the original zombie design when all they had to do was just make them look more realistic and varied to improve on it. The lore that they were all old zombies now and that it was a different virus didn't, just didn't explain why A there were no freshly turned zombies and B why these things didn't even look realistic compared to the amazingly well realised biters from the first game. Those guys not only looked more human but more three dimensional and solid in a game that is now nine years old. Yeah they were all a bit follically challenged but their overall presence and the way they interacted with the environment was fantastic. Techland had greatly improved the DL2 virals in the last few updates, and that did answer the freshly turned question, but despite more variations in the zombies, they still had those goofy, cartoonish faces that left me feeling sad that what were essentially the main characters in a zombie game just felt like an afterthought in this one. So let's take a quick look at the footage I recorded the day before the update, and then I'll show you this same area and the way it looks now. I decided to use the military convoy near the bazaar as there's always a good selection of zombies here and I recorded both before and after footage on the PS5 to make it a fair comparison. So first a reminder of how all the crusty zombies looked and it's clear that despite having some variation in clothing and appearance they all still look very similar to each other due to that terrible complexion of theirs. Uh, there are some that have unexplained chunks missing from their faces or missing noses and of course the hazmat zombies stand out and that one there is a good example of what's changed since the update. At first glance they both look exactly the same but when you zoom right in you can see a big difference through the visor as the new one's face looks so much more realistic than the old crusty one did. I mean, this guy seemed a bit attached to the old one but sadly he had to go. These big half naked dudes that you always saw, they seem to have been reskinned with much more variation now and again look fantastic, as do all of the new zombies to be honest. There's such a diverse and varied assortment now that I spent ages in photo mode checking them all out, as that really is the best way to see them all without getting bashed about every few seconds. The skin textures are much more reminiscent of the original Dying Light Zombies and although the blistering also looks similar, it's still different enough to be explained by the new virus. And there are still older looking zombies in the crowd too, so they still fit with the lore to a degree, but I'm not sure doing away with the crusties completely was a good idea, as people are going to wonder what happened to the old it's been 15 years since the fall explanation of why they looked that way before. There's no dispute in the fact though that these new zombie variations all look incredible and you have to commend Techland for the clear amount of effort that went into their design. I also had fun trying to match the old zombie models with their reskin versions based on the clothing and it's then that you really appreciate the upgrade here. And they do actually seem more solid and three dimensional in gameplay too, even down to the way they move which makes them much more creepy now. They also shamble a bit more like the DL1 zombies now instead of running at you in that crazy legged way the crusty ones did, but they still do seem to struggle with stairs and can still walk through fencing as if it wasn't there, so I had to try the ultimate test of seeing how well they dealt with climbing onto vehicles, and to be fair they really do seem to interact with the environment better than they did before, so Techland have clearly worked on this. Ok so it's still far from perfect, but apart from the odd one glitching out in certain spots, it's genuinely a big improvement. The only criticism I have of the new zombie design is that some of them look like the skin tone of the head doesn't always match the body, and as a result it ends up looking a bit like a Frankenstein's monster. And even stranger still is the presence of a 5 o'clock shadow on many of the female zombies faces. <laughs> 
From what I can see in this area at least, there's been no changes to the appearance of the main special infected, but surprisingly they do seem to have changed the virals again, despite them already being greatly improved in the previous updates. Not only have they introduced some new faces, but they've changed the eyes again to be blood red with a white iris. Now it does look very effective and a bit scary I suppose, but I can't help missing those hazel brown almost animalistic eyes that they had on the more recent versions. Also I noticed that virals can often have ammo for firearms on them now when looted, and this PK viral especially seemed to have a fair amount on him, so I don't know if they'll be the ones to go after when you're low on ammo or not, but it would make sense I suppose. You can also find cartons of ammo in these new loot crates at the military convoy, so it doesn't look like ammo will be that scarce once you've discovered all of the new firearms. Another environmental enhancement is in how the cars around Villador look. You can see that they do look a bit more realistic now, but the main difference as far as I could tell was that they now have a space underneath them. This one doesn't really make sense to me as after 15 years of sitting in the same spot the earth would have started to reclaim them so in that respect the old design made more sense. At least this one does have flat tyres but the other ones here are all still fully inflated after 15 years so I really don't know why they chose to change this detail in the game. Now when it comes to the copy and pasted elements around the map then one of the areas I highlighted in my previous video on the subject were these beehives which I'm sad to say remain unchanged since the update but I'm very pleased to say that they finally addressed some of the worst offenders when it comes to reused assets in the game. Before now every night runner hideout was literally a carbon copy of each other right down to the items on the shelf and although like the beehive areas they were there just to serve a purpose it ended up giving you that feeling of deja vu and it was a prime example of how a procedurally generated map made exploring much less fun than one that felt lovingly created with a human touch. There were some variations like this converted bus but even they had the exact same layout inside with the exact same chessboard in the corner and even had the exact same street sign covering the windshield. Now of course the devs didn't have to change anything here, but I recently discovered that they actually did reference my video for some of the changes in this update, so not only am I very proud to know that I've influenced the game in some way, but I'm also amazed at what a great job they've done to fix it. This particular bus has a boarded up windshield now, and when you turn around you can see what a difference there is to the rest of the interior. There's fully stocked racking and clothes on hooks, the chessboard is gone, and it just looks more lived in than it did before. This one still seems to have the street sign from before, but that's fine as long as they don't all have it now. And there is a little gas stove and a wood burner with a little chimney. I really don't want to guess what the bucket is for though if I'm honest. Uh, the rooftop hideouts are even better, as they are all unique now. Uh, the basic elements of a safe zone are all still present of course, you know, the sleeping bag and a generator for the UV light, but the beehives and the daisies are gone and no two hideouts are the same now. Of course there are still some reused assets here and there, but the placement of everything and the individuality of each shack design makes this look like it was all lovingly created by an actual person and is a massive improvement overall. Now without a doubt the laziest safe house design in Dying Light 2 was found in the metro stations. With only a couple of exceptions every single one you fast travelled to was identical, meaning that you literally couldn't tell which one you were in without referring to the map. But I'm very pleased to say now that this is no longer the case, as each safe room has been totally redesigned. And they haven't just simply moved units and stuff around either. They have walled off sections to make the space feel like a different location, and they've added assets that didn't exist in these areas before to make them look more lived in. Some objects don't look like they belong here though, even from before the fall. I mean, that is unless Aiden's into heels now of course, but again a huge step up in terms of unique building interiors in the game. Another terribly copy and pasted building was the GRE quarantine zones, but what made matters worse here is that there was very little incentive to go back into them once you'd looted all of the inhibitors. There were still resources to collect each time you went in, but it hardly seemed worth the risk of going there at night for what was on offer, so I'm very happy to see that some of them have now become firearms challenge zones where you can earn some more legend XP. 
This one's pretty straightforward, you just have to clear the building of zombies with limited ammo in a quick time, but it's a pretty good reason to go back into this building again in my opinion. However, if you just walk in there at night now without starting the challenge, then the resources are pretty sparse now. They're virtually gone even in the cupboards, so not much point in wasting time here other than for the challenge. Okay, so I haven't talked about even a fraction of all of the great things that the new update has delivered on this game's second anniversary. But I just had to do a video on the things that I've been most focused on in my previous videos. And as you can see, those things alone have improved the look and the feel of the game massively. And honestly, if this had been the only update this time around, then I would have been very happy with it. I'll probably do a firearms video at some point, but for now, I'm just going to spend some time checking out everything else. Oh, and if you were wondering what outfit I was wearing earlier in my, uh, my video, then it's a throwback to the classic Retrowave bundle called the Retrowave Redux bundle. If you go to the in-game store before March the 7th, then you'll be able to pick it up for free, and it, and it comes with the Dark Sickle and the Blade Max Machete. You can also purchase the Volcatronics rifle now too, but that is sold sap separately sadly, and although that is currently on offer too, I may just pick that little beauty up for myself. So what do you think of the new graphical enhancements? Do you think the decision to reskin all of the zombies was a good one, or did you prefer the old crusty ones? Let me know in the comments as always, and if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.